Oh, it's so mind-blowing, really. It's like I've seen her grow as an artist, um, you know, from loving, just playing with art, being in school, you know, always finding a way to to go to art class instead of wherever she, else she was supposed to be. And, uh, <laughs> her grow and then actually leave art for, for a bit where it didn't seem to have, it kind of came too easy I think and lost a sense of value to her which was um, as a mom having seen her love it so much for so long it was perplexing I guess and then seeing her return with such a fullness and um just generosity of ideas and her energy and her creativity. It's um, to be able to share in that is really lovely. It's like a full circle kind of thing. So as far as doing this show, my mom has all these wonderful ideas and it's been amazing this past year to see a huge shift in like the realization of them so when she first mentioned that she might want to do a show together and i was like yeah awesome cool let's do it i'm like start to email got three paintings done and like two days I'm crazy and I'm like yeah here we go mm -hmm. and then it's like this to create actually like a sustainable effort towards something that actually would take place many months later it was really interesting to see you do that Having a different space to be in and creating this work was something to really be proud of. And it's, I'm usually doing things by myself, but with my mom's help. Like when I just did this show in Atlanta, um, and she's, she's there helping every part of the way. And I had a show at Savoy in February, and she's there helping every part of the way and helping me figure out, like, <laughs> I'm sitting there heard this picture of my painting like, what's going wrong here? <laughs> <laughs> and this has been our relationship for many years. Like I started exhibiting, just um, producing my own exhibitions really like at 20, 21. Um, and with the exception of being in Costa Rica for that year, I really didn't have much space where I wasn't doing some kind of massive project that I had come up with and I've learned to work more sustainably but whether it was a magazine project where I was producing a magazine with my sister or making fur hammocks for a one night pop up at a bar in Philly <laughs> I'd be in these massive undertakings and it was none of it would have been possible without having been raised the way I was to kind of be thinking big, <laughs> but also to be encouraged and supported that art was, um, you know, s something that was worth doing. As long as we have a life, we have a life we can create with. So I think that being able to see my mom doing her first exhibition at 60, <laughs> is just really inspiring and um, you know in a similar way where I've seen where I've seen people doing yoga well into a certain age I can I feel so inspired and connected to the fullness of a life's journey by seeing and witnessing that and then for it to be my mom is that much more special as a artist you're of a seeing person you see things a lot just details that other people maybe miss or maybe see and maybe appreciate or maybe they don't 
And so that just really kept being a repeated thing. We'd be in the mountains and the way the water and the light would interact and the you know waterfalls or just in the, the way the, the river was running over rocks and I would just be like, oh, I gotta take, <laughs> gotta take a video, gotta take it. <laughs> but a lot of it had to do with like, kind of like that golden hour or like three or four in the afternoon where it, where it was like the light was just hitting the water a certain way. But the play of light was just that, that magical quality that for me that light has where, you know, just looking around, I see so many different shades of green and the, you know, the leaves around you or whatever. It's just, just a beautiful part of nature and water just makes it that more magical. I love it because we aren't separate of these things ever. We're never separate and light, light changes because of my presence. And I am transformed by the presence of light and the same thing with water. There's space that is created in water once I am in it. <laughs> and conversely, I am affected and have all of these beautiful transformative experiences of being in water or even just even just the simplicity of taking a bath or playing in the ocean and so for me this kind of was just a way to let the figure be reclaimed in nature <laughs> not as separate of nature and yet um, to just let the painting speak for themselves because they can be very much just looked at formally for the image, the picture. And then there's the surrounding of the ceramics and this other energy that I think invites a little bit deeper consideration, a little bit deeper thoughtfulness. That, that was a big point for me, was being able to kind of both pair things back, but also let the viewer do their part of being invited in to that space where where their their response is a is a contributing part to the work. Light is such a component of our internal experience as well. Just the idea that it's often referred to as you know going through dark times or going yeah. through you know. Your life looks so bright. Your future looks so, you know, mm -hmm. bright ahead and things like that. And it's like... You're glowing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so there's a, a component of light and darkness that we think of in, you know, in our internal person. I would say to a young artist, um, Really, keeping going is a big, huge part of it. To have the stamina to to maintain some sort of creative practice amidst a world that begs you to do whatever pays you the most. You know, like we get our, we sometimes divert our energy to what we feel like is the most important things, but what we've been told is important is usually not cherishing our artistic spirit and our creative spirit. So if we can maintain that that's important to us, even if it's not paying us, because it's really not, um, we don't have to make all our hobbies into careers. We don't have to make all of our hobbies or our interests or even our passions or even what we're good at. It doesn't actually have to be something that becomes our livelihood. So when we take that pressure off, when we take the pressure off that it has to be a certain way and just cherish that our spirit wants to create, it can find a means for expression in a number of ways. And, um, and I think about that even when I've taken time off painting, I've maybe enjoyed photography more. There's, there's just so many ways and to not sell yourself short on thinking, okay, art is only this. And it only is worthwhile if I make money. I think that's the biggest way to keep yourself, you know, from really shining. Thank you for watching this episode of Sulphur Artist Talks. 
Sulphur Studios is a project of Arts Southeast, a nonprofit whose mission is to make Savannah a destination for art and culture in the Southeast by supporting established and emerging artists, engaging a diverse community with creative programming, and developing awareness and appreciation of the arts. This content is made possible by viewers like you. If you'd like to support our mission, please visit us at www.sulphurstudios.org to learn more. You can also reach out to us via email at info at sulphurstudios.org. On behalf of Sulphur Studios, I wish you well and hope to see you next time. Thank you.